<laughs> spray sprayed out the whole thing did she drowned the thing with sanitizer the she, she, she wouldn't <laughs> touch the thing to get the ticket out without sanitizer you know without this she <laughs> I, I came up, but the thing was dripping. <laughs> like, I, I could have got I could have got drunk on the thing. You guys, ninety percent alcohol. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, is that crazy? The the control. Okay, it's a scripture here in Matthew chapter eighteen, and it's, this is Jesus speaking. It says, "Again, I say to you that the two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it to be done for them by my Father in heaven. For wherever two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them." So that is an amazing scripture because it says, if there's just two uh, or three, that the presence of God is there. So, Johnny, wow, what do you think of that? The presence. I'm glad he didn't say 20 or 30. Mm-hmm. Because I think the word that he said, if two or three are in unity, right, who agreed together, I don't think this is just your normal type, type of agreement. Like, most people believe that we can come together and, you know, not fight for five or ten minutes. Yeah. This is a unity of the Holy Spirit. This is because the Holy Spirit is in you and the Holy Spirit is in me. Same right? Holy Spirit. Same Holy Spirit, yeah. right? Interesting. And you, you are, you're being led by the Holy Spirit and I'm being led by the Holy Spirit at the same time. And that's the kind of unity or so, agreement so, that, you, so you expect unity, yeah. You expect unity because it's so difficult to get people to agree. I think Christians worldwide agree 98% of, on the scripture, and yet they split over 2%. Yeah. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. But when you can get two or three that are in agreement, this is, this is the Holy Spirit unity between two people the same unity that's between father son and holy spirit mm. that's mighty yes that is mighty <clears throat> so yeah. you would say that the holy spirit in me wouldn't disagree with the holy spirit in you no <laughs> no no <laughs> I am so, here, that, so then there would be there would be agreement there would be agreement if, if we are being led by the holy spirit if we're being led by the holy spirit but if we're not there might be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we always put those verses together in Matthew 18. It's Jesus in the midst of his people, but he says, where two or three are gathered together, there am I in the midst. And then, if two of you shall agree. So it's the fact that he's in the midst that wow. makes him uh, makes that possible. Mm. And then, mm. believe it or not, whatever you bind on earth shall have already been bound. All those three verses are together. In Matthew 18, whatever you bind on the earth shall have already been bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on the earth shall have already been loosed. That, to me, means he's, he's, he's getting some action, right? Wow. He, there's, there's, an action there's an action scene going on here. Mm-hmm. And he's able to trust us with that kind of authority. And that's the burden of my heart these days, wow. right? To begin to see some real action. Yeah, but Chris, right. can you kind of unpack that a bit? What, what bind on earth? What, what does that mean? It means that God is saying <clears throat> that I'm giving you the responsibility because it's Jesus in the midst yeah. of His people. It's Him mm. in us, continuing what He began to do. Wow! Right, Acts, 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 chapter one, verse one: all that Jesus began to do and to teach. And He's saying, "Well, if He only began, how is He going to continue?" And you've just told me how, right? In the midst, in the midst of his people, through so then, you, through you. So then just to backtrack a bit on that. So in, w- in what sense is he in the midst of his people? Because there are all kinds of different theories about that and different religious expressions about what it means that Jesus should be in the midst mm-hmm. of his people. Mm-hmm. So in, in what sense? Is Jesus in the midst of his people? Hmm. Hmm. And to me, it's that if you are a Christian, if you are born again, he lives in you. Yep. Yep. And, and so it's not so much about 
that Jesus shows up in our midst. It is that we are aware of him being in our midst, that there is a, a tangible presence mm. that we experience in the group setting and a tangible presence that we experience personally. Wow. And that we are aware of his presence. And, the, and if we are aware of his presence, then we're aware of what he might be saying about mm one particular situation or another that concerns us. Mm -hmm. And so if if we are people who come together with this awareness of the presence of Jesus, we can hear wow. what he wants yep. To, yep. to do, mm -hmm. what he wants to say. Well, is there something really interesting going on here in terms of the relationship between God and man here? Because God is extending an unbelievable trust towards mankind that he would actually send his Holy Spirit and give his Holy Spirit that this ministry of Jesus, which we see in the, in the Gospels, okay, we see this continuation in the Acts, you know, amongst those who are filled with the Holy Spirit. And we see that being an open-ended book and it's going on today through true believers, right? So in a sense, if I was God, I'd say, hang on a minute, I'm not going to trust that bunch with my Holy Spirit because they, they'll just goof it. You know, and, and in a sense, down through church history, uh, many have goofed it, you know, mm. haven't they? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and here's the thing, Johnny, if you and me say, well, yeah, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit and you're filled with the Holy Spirit. So we're in perfect, constant, complete unity on all matters. Well, hang on a minute. Mm. There's a little flesh rises up every so often, you know, kind That's of right. contaminates and we might disagree on things. That's you right. Know. You might want to use Spanish slates and I might want to, might want to use blue bangers, you know, and we have mm. a bit of a row over that one, you know, mm. and it's like, hang on a minute. You know, it's it, there's a mm. difference there. Mm -hmm. But that's not the Holy Spirit's fault. No, no. Is it? No, no it's no. not. No, no. So, no. Uh, no, I just, but I, Jesus wants to live his perfect life through us because he's the only one who had a perfect life. And we call this resurrection life. But for him to live that perfect resurrection life through me, I got to do a bit of surrendering. I may have to do a little bit of dying to myself. Yeah. Just like the argument yeah. between a couple of different types of slates on a roof. There has to be a little bit of of not compromise, but death of self, of my will. Or humility. Humility. Yeah. Like, like what? I've got to be more concerned with my relationship with you than with my own ideas. Oh. Right? So if I think, I, I, I'm, what, what's most important to me? Most important to me is my friendship and my relationship with you, Aunt. So I'm not going to push my agenda so far that it's going to upset my relationship with you. I've got to honor I, my relationship I, more. I, and vice versa. And vice yeah, versa. Yeah. So it's not about <laughs> my great idea, yeah. right? Yeah. It's, it takes a little bit of humility and to allow that resurrection life because Jesus was meek and humble of heart. And he was so humble that he became nothing mm, of yeah. no reputation. This is the example that's set for me. But so much of the time we go around with, I've got a great idea, yeah. right? And you're going to get in line with my great idea, no matter what. Yeah. And my idea might be a great idea, but if I'm trampling on my relationship with you, it's not a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's, it, it defeats the purpose. So it's not about, it's about me honoring and respecting my, my relationship with you. This is where the unity comes in. Mm -hmm. This is where the real unity comes in. Yeah. And, and that, you know, that that works on the horizontal level, you know, between between us, mm -hmm. but it also works on the vertical level mm -hmm. between us and Jesus, mm -hmm. that uh, our opinion and our great idea, you know, when we when we think about that in the context of of Jesus mm -hmm. and what he knows and his ideas, then we kind of. The, the greatness of the idea that we just had. Not that great. Kind of, mm -hmm. You know, you kind of kind of feel, oh, well, you know, if whatever idea he has, it's a lot better than, yeah. than me. Yeah. Um, so that that's works in both directions, you know, sure. the vertical and the horizontal. Mm. And very important to me on the vertical level, mm. 
mm-hmm. because really the horizontal level only works you know relationships between people and christians only really work when we're in right relationship with him mm-hmm. and and that kind of ties oh. in with what you were saying earlier yeah. about yeah. that we can all be full of the holy spirit and still you know manage to manage to fight like cats and dogs yeah. <laughs> that's right um, why well because actually we're not submitted to the head who is jesus yeah. you see because if we if we were all submitted to the head who is jesus then everything would be rosy in the garden mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> it would be great yeah. and to the extent so listen you know in terms of being christians and in terms of being church members and 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 all that yeah. stuff you know we kind of think like sometimes that man we're really tearing it up we're really doing a great job here mm-hmm. we've really got a good church going mm-hmm. but you know if if the harmony is not actually there then mm-hmm. uh, we're not we are not in right relationship with him no and no. and it's very easy to for me to look <clears> at johnny <throat> or to look at aunt or chris and say well I, you know he really needs to get it together there. <laughs> you know? yep. yeah. but, but actually, you know, it's me. It's me. Yep. Yeah, well, many of us as Christians, we, we kind of go by the book, you know. We kind of we follow what God says in his word. We do our best and all the rest. But, you know, this thing about the Holy Spirit, well, he's not a thing now. He's a person. Let's never forget that one <laughs> for starters. But, Chris, in your life, you were always uh, well I won't say always but for much of your life you're a, a man of the word you know you, mm-hmm. you, you grew up you had missionary parents you know you, you were walking with the Lord you know you, uh, uh, but one day you were painting a house down in, and, and, uh, in Kimmage or somewhere and somebody come up to you and told you about something mm-hmm. and I think it had a profound change in your life yeah, the effect indeed, of that indeed. do you want to tell us what that was yes yes now before I come on to that we went to a, a chapel out in Selinogan <clears throat> some years ago um, and a man called the Reverend David Watson was, was speaking on a very, very moving address. I've never forgotten it. At 50 years of age, he was dying of cancer. And he spoke about cancer as being what was really wrong with the church, right? Everybody doing their own thing, right? A cancer in the, in the body of Christ because one of the most we're talking about oneness here and the, the, the thing that comes out most clearly in the New Testament is that God has a body right, of which he's the head and you just happen to be part of that body but if there's a cancer cell i.e. somebody doing their own thing never, no doubt for God as they see it well then that is going to destroy that body just a week ago just a, just a few, a few years ago, this week, we lost my my wife and Johnny's mother, and it was cancer. And I've had a war with cancer ever since. If you want to really, really get me on my knees, just tell me about someone who's got cancer, and, and mm. because I believe it's 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 something that is really seriously an indication of what's wrong with the church. With the body, with what we call the body of Christ, unfortunately, it's not functioning as the body of Christ. If there's a cancer or a lot of cancer cells going on doing their own thing at the expense mm. yeah. of the other cells, mm. help mm. me with that one if you can. Yeah, <clears throat> what that what that agreement in the body of Christ produces is not just a nice feeling, or mm. you know a. A, um, a standard, an ethical standard or something, what that agreement produces is the release of the power of the word of God. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it, I mean, isn't that the thing that we're so lacking in the church today, given everything that's going on in the world? Where is the church? Where is the power of God being released and I do believe that it, it centers around what, what we're talking about in terms of Jesus in the midst mm. speaking the word that we have heard from him for specific situations mm. and that we take, we take the time to think about it, pray about it, be in his presence, talk about it before we actually decide what we are going to pray I mean, imagine that, 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 you know, we, we, 
apply ourselves to hearing what the Spirit of God is saying for specific situations. Mm -hmm. And we come to agreement in that. And then we can speak it because it is the voice of God speaking mm -hmm. into the earth because it has come from the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And that's the, that's the privilege that we get to, to have. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes we hit that on the nail, we hit the nail on the head and sometimes we hit the nail on the thumb, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. that it, it really works. So you, you, seem, you, seem to be saying, work. you seem to be saying, Dave, that so much is about hearing, kind yeah. of, mm -hmm. you know, more than yeah. just vocalizing to God your own whatever's more like just to discern and hear what God is saying about the situation. Mm -hmm. I did an interesting exercise recently. I, I thought, you know, what most of us have smartphones these days and on the phone you get your news headlines if you want them, you know. And I just one morning, I don't know why I did this, but I just decided I'm going to pray through every one of these headlines, you know. And just as I opened the headline, it could have been about anything. I won't tell you what they were, you know, but, you know, the news has been what it has been. And as each one, you know, turn that into prayer, turn that into prayer, turn that into prayer. And you'll find something strange goes on. You'll find that your heart attitude changes on things because very easy in the flesh. It's very easy to get angry. It's very easy to get upset. It's very easy to get depressed. It's very easy to get all these negative things in reading or hearing the news, you know. But mm. if the people of God, I'm just kind of wondering about this one. Mm. If the people of God would, would transform each one of them into prayer, wouldn't that mm. be kind of an interesting mm. exercise? Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Beca because what you're doing is you're focusing more on presence of God yeah. than what's coming across it's on like, the news it's headlines. like you're saying Jesus come into this one. You're bringing, you know? it, bringing it all back to him, yeah. bringing it back to him, mm. casting your cares on him for he cares for you, being more occupied with the presence of a living God than all the problems. Yeah. Because mm. the problems are overwhelming. And yeah. all we have to do is some people just watch so much television newscasts that they're going around depressed all the time. Sure. Because yeah. they're not focused on the presence of a living God and that kingdom mm -hmm. that has it's coming and it has come yeah. and his will is being done on the earth as it is in heaven yeah. and we pray that into all the situations but be more focused on the presence than the problems mm -hmm. that seems like the kind of answers that we need you know you and, asked me you about know, Anthony you asked me about China I was just about to come back to you Chris I thought mm -hmm. you were getting off the hook there <laughs> no, not at all no, no. Uh, no. Uh, it was it was a, a, a mission with over a thousand missionaries in the field in China called the, the China Inland Mission they changed their name after we got thrown out of China um, <clears throat> it's now the Overseas Missionary Fellowship but it was interdenominational so we had people who were very, very different from each other, mm -hmm. right? And they had problems, as you might imagine. And the mission had a very uh, very practical, but not necessarily a very spiritual way of solving the problem. So here were two missionaries with serious problems with their, that, 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 that different interpretation of Scripture and so on. But they were, they were genuinely called of God. That was the main thing. And... and but they had a very practical way of solving it. How'd they do that? They said, well, my brother, presume it was a brother, we understand the problem. You can't work with your fellow missionary. We're going to assign you to <clears throat> a thousand square miles of China, all to yourself, <laughs> where you will never meet another missionary. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be the answer to your problem? Yeah. <laughs> but a few years later, and I just have to add this bit, they, those missionaries could find themselves sharing the same prison cell. So we had our Catholic priest and we had our, 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 our evangelical missionary in the same prison cell for the same reason. As far as the communists were concerned, the same reason. And of course, they had laid down their lives for God in that, China, in that country. Well, Chris, did persecution then bring unity? Persecution certainly contributed to it because it, it, yeah. it, it, it realized, and I believe that that's what this China is today, is the fastest growing Christian country in the world mm -hmm. because of the persecution yeah and 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 uh, it's serious it's it's a serious persecution i have a book upstairs where the communists were advancing and these young couple 26 years of age three three month old baby and just working near where my parents were working when i say near a couple of hundred miles is is near yeah. in, in in china 
and, and uh, the advancing communist army um, was was literally murdering everybody that that that, that disagreed with them. So these lovely young couple, 26, 27 years of age, were beheaded in front of their their congregation. Mm. And but oh. the testimony, the testimony of that couple, I've just re, just reread the book upstairs. It went worldwide, mm. right? Of what you know, they, of what this had, had had cost them. It God honoured that, and of course, the, this, I, I have one more story if you can bear it. Mm. But here's a, a, a pastor with his wife and three children, and they're going to be buried alive. But they have a chance that it, they can recant at any stage, if if they wish, if they choose. But they turn out a hundred thousand people, the whole city, to watch this execution. And you say, well, uh, the, 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 the husband was, was, was wavering a bit, wife not, it's not fair on the, on the children, on the three children. And the wife says, well, we're going to be with Jesus tonight and united as a family with him. And as they filled in the earth, they sang every hymn in the book. And when there was silence, a hundred thousand people decided they were going to turn their lives over to Jesus. Mm. That that just was incredible. That they were willing for that price to be paid. The church is growing in China, mm-hmm. whereas I think we need a bit of persecution here mm-hmm. to to do that. You know, I'd like to kind of track it back a bit in terms of where we were talking about the presence of God. <clears throat> um, and especially about experiencing the presence of God. Because, you know, we know that when we are born again, that Holy Spirit comes and we are alive in him and he lives in us. And, you know, that um, so he's present with us. So what does it mean when we talk about experiencing the presence of God? Because he is with us. He is in us already. And what it has to do with is um, the human brain. That there, that God, God created human beings exactly the way they are, the, with a brain that is a unique piece of apparatus. <laughs> oh. um, in that with our brain we are conscious of the world around us we are conscious of people we're conscious of the table we're conscious of our smartphones we're conscious of philosophies and thoughts and they all relate to us so our brain has that capacity and that capacity amounts to half of our soul. The other half of our soul is consciousness of God. That the human soul is the most unique thing in all of the universe. That we have this capacity to be conscious of ourselves and our environment, but also through the Holy Spirit, we have the capacity to be conscious of the presence of God. And like you were sharing earlier before we began, you know, that does impact on our thoughts and it impacts upon our feelings. You know, that it's possible. (laughs) It's possible to feel the presence of God. And in fact, it's not wrong to feel the presence of God because what that is, is your awareness of the presence of God. And it seems to me that this is absolutely key for what God is doing in the church today, that he is wanting us individually and as a body of people together to be conscious of his eternal presence, because he's always present. He's always with us. But what he's wanting us is to be aware of that, to know that, to feel that, to experience that. And that 
th- that this is the sort of thing that brings people to do what that young couple in China did. Because you, when you experience the presence of God, what is it that you experience? Man, God is love. Mm-hmm. And you start to experience multifaceted uh, revelation of, of his personal love for you. Mm-hmm. And once that happens, you will do anything <laughs> you will do anything you will put up with anything you will mm-hmm. you will tolerate anything mm-hmm. to preserve your experience of that love yeah. so people say you know well god doesn't really love me because well i don't i've never experienced that well he does love you the the problem is that you haven't experienced it mm. but through the holy spirit he does want you to experience it so step in yeah. if you're a believer mm. he's in you already don't be looking to climb up to heaven or <laughs> mm. or do some great work to earn an experience he's already in you and he wants you to have that you just step into it mm-hmm. because we, we were talking last night about receiving it being receptive to it yes and i was just sh- sharing a, a scripture from zephaniah about the lord been in our midst and what's he doing what's he doing in our midst and I said, is he just sitting on a throne looking all regal and all holy <laughs> what, what, but is he active he's very active and it's like to read to Zephaniah here it talks about the Lord your God in your midst the mighty one will save I don't know about you but I need to be saved a hundred times a day in a hundred different ways mm-hmm. the mighty one to save He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. So I thought I was the one who was meant to be doing the singing. (laughs) But he's singing over me. Yeah. He's he's actively, he actively, and this is relationship with a living God. Yeah, yeah. This is a God who wants personal relationship with me. Uh, and when I read that and when I meditate on that and when I allow the Holy Spirit in when I receive it I experience it uh, it's letting it in So many. it's not just words in a book that was written thousands of years ago they're alive yeah. and with the present with the Holy Spirit and helping me to receive that I can actually experience God rejoicing over me yep Mm -hmm. and that changes everything that changes everything i the way i do anything the way i go to work the way i have my dinner the way i i I communicate with other people it changes everything to know that there's a god rejoicing over me well i find sometimes johnny being a parent really helps because you kind of get this insight into a relationship between your your children you know you and your children you love them Regardless, you just love them, you know, and, and, and in a way, God loves us regardless, in a sense. Now, this is not a license for sin. Let's make this very mm. clear, you know, but God just loves us as people, you know, and that's how, how on earth could God rejoice over me? Well, that's how he does it, because we are his offspring, yeah. you know, we are his children, you know. Mm. Um, I just want to move over slightly to Acts, uh, a scripture in Acts. It's another story of persecution. Chris had a, very, a modern day version of it, but this is Stephen, you know. It says, and they stoned Stephen. I'm going to read the very end bit of this here. And uh, as he was calling on God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. I just kind of always picture this. Stephen being very calm when the, he was getting ro- rocks thrown at him to kill him, okay? And no joke what that would do to you if they kill you with stones you know and and then he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice uh, you awful people no he didn't say that he said uh, he said Lord do not charge them with this sin and when he had said this he fell asleep yep I don't ever want to get over how that oneness and of, of, of us with him and him with us and us with one another is brought about as he takes on that death sentence on his own person. Oh. Well, man. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yes. 